Well, welcome everybody to B-Varsity Live, uh, September the 4th edition here from the Dignity Health Studios. I'm Zach Ewing with my co-host Trevor Horn over there in the dunces seat. How, how are you today, Trevor? I'm good. I'm just, I'm, I'm on IG right now trying to let people know that we have two fine gentlemen in studio along with the two of us today and our fine intern, Cameron. He's such a nerd. I uh, am. He can't get off his phone. Okay, with us today are a couple of the big heroes of Week Zero in high school football. Brian Nixon, the uh, head coach at Liberty High, and uh, probably the hero of the game. I'm going to try this, Stavros, because you challenged me a couple weeks ago. Stavros Castantonis. Katzentonis. 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 Okay. I messed it up. All right. I would have gotten it right. Can we, right, Stavros? Yeah. And the other, the other <laughs> challenge is whether I could spell it right. Okay. Should but we do that now? last night. I, well, listen, I've written your name so much now that I th think I'm going to get this, but he told me I screwed it up in my column, my blog post this morning. You put the T before the S at the beginning. You the, shouldn't do that. The T is the before S the before S. the T. Sorry, you went Cass. I think it was a typo because I know that. I think yeah. that was just a typo. Okay. K A T S A N. T O N I S. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Beautiful. All right. I oh, see. There it is right there. I, I swear I didn't look at that. Uh, no, that's cool. So you guys beat Mission Viejo last week, 18 to 7. You had the 78. People were saying 90. We 78 yards on film. I don't know where 90 came from, but it's still a long way to run. You scooped up the fumble, scored. When you guys are up 12 7, Mission Viejo has the ball late. It's, you know, they're going in trying to score to, to possibly win the game. Uh, and, and you scoop and score the other way and, and seal the deal. Uh, Let's show that video before before we ask these guys about that. We have that video, Chris. Yes. H here we go. Here, here's here's Stavros. This is Mission Viejo in the in the dark jerseys. They're go coming in, possibly to score in the red zone. Curtis Brown jars the ball loose, and then oh look what I found. And uh, Stavros on the spot with a 78 yard. Nice block right return. there, by the way. Clean. Got Who some. was that? Matt Hubble. Hubble. Matt Hubble with the block. Yeah, that. It, I'm not sure you needed it. I didn't. If he had gotten a block in the back there, Coach. Mm, we had that conversation. Yeah. Times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was close. That was close. But it was a clean block. And, yeah. uh, and Stavros, w w I mean, you're running th that, that ball back. Are, are you thinking we just won the game while you're doing it? I mean, are you, are you thinking that far ahead, or is it just one foot in front of the other? Uh, I think it was one foot in front of the other because I wasn't smiling at all when I was running. So once, once it happened, then I was like, all right. I, th I think we got this, but Did, were you kind of worried? I mean, it seemed like I saw the couple plays before that defense might have been on your heels just a little bit on that drive. Um, a little bit, but I knew our defense would rally together and we'd get something something done at least. Okay, so what do you see in that big? Because that that's the honestly, I mean, I, Trevor may disagree with me. I think it's the biggest play of Week Zero in Kern County. Why would I disagree about that? Well, Mar you know, Marcus you guys are Bruce. Up, uh, well, 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 yeah, Marcus Bruce and that run, but they were already up at that point. You got to think that you guys were only up twelve seven. It was like, what, 2.20 left on the clock when that, when that ball is snapped. They're at the 15-yard line. They've been driving on you in that drive. You have no idea what's going to happen. Could they drive down and score on you? Who knows? That play right there. It flips the script. It yep. completely flip, flips the script on the entire season and for the state of California because I'm getting text messages. A, your ba Bakersfield boys did well from the CIF office. That really shook everything up with you guys beating Mission Viejo. I mean, that's a major, major, not only a major play, but a major win for you guys. So we'll talk about that in a second. Yep. Walk us through the play that, that sealed it. I mean, did you did you see the ball come loose? Is that all instinct? How, what are you thinking? Uh, I was just coming up, and I saw Curtis Brown was holding him up a bit, and I just went my, like, helmet right on the ball, and it just popped out, and I just saw it, saw it come up right in front of me, just picked it up and started running. Hey, look what I found. Yeah. <laughs> did what, you, what, what was your vantage point, Brian? I was nice play. Our defensive end strung it out. And uh, we thought, okay, we're going to keep them, keep them in bounds, keep the clock rolling. And then uh, Chris Barnes came in, laid a nice lick about the same time that Stavros came in. Ball popped out, and our sideline went crazy as soon as he picked it up. So uh, from a coach's standpoint, we were just trying to keep everybody off the field and keep everybody back, so nothing happened. Right. You know, so that was one of those big moments that our defense the entire evening I love coaches. Co now, now what can go wrong? Let's, <laughs> let's make sure nothing else goes wrong now. Yeah. But you have to think that way because otherwise it probably would happen. Right. Um, so, like Trevor said, this, this shakes up the, the, the state picture. Mission Viejo, Cal High Sports had Mission Viejo ranked number 20. I think Cal Preps had him even higher than that. Uh, to go on the road, beat that team. First of all, what was your level of confidence? I mean, I know you always say you're not going to go into a game thinking you're going to lose ever. Mm -hmm. But, Coach, you had your Centennial team down there a couple years ago. You know how good they are. You know how tough yeah. it is to play down there. I mean, what are you thinking? What are you telling the kids going in? Uh, how, how realistic is, hey, we'll beat these, this team by double digits? 
Uh, you know, you just go to compete. You know, as we talked earlier in the season that, you know, playing a game like that, you get to see your weaknesses because you're playing a phenomenal football team. And we have to go in and, and we believe we can win. I mean, that's the one thing is we got to get these guys to say, we're going to go down the southern section. We don't care what their name is. We're going to play good football. Right. And this is week zero. Let's go out, see how good we can be, and see what we can do. And uh, our kids believed it. Our kids believed it from – the time we stepped on the football field until the time they clock ran out, and uh, we are pretty proud of the way they played. What was your level of, of confidence, Davros? I mean, did, did you have any idea they were top 20 in state and all that sort of stuff? Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> a lot of people talk about it, so I mean. But I think our defense was just, and our offense too, I mean, our whole team was just, we really bought into it, and we really knew that, I mean, we could do this, and you know, went down there with that mindset, and we obviously did it. Coach, what uh, you've had good teams, obviously, at, last year at Liberty and then at Centennial mm -hmm. before that. Very good teams. There's a guy spinning footballs down at USC right now who is the quarterback on a couple of those teams. Do you have any idea yet where this team may rank? I mean, it looks like it could be one of your best. No clue. You know, and it's what we're preaching right now is consistency. We have to be a consistent football team day in and day out. Friday, huge win. Let's burn it. Let's talk about it 15 weeks later. You know, right now we have to focus on the game at hand each and every Friday night. From a coach's standpoint, we talk daily. We have to get better on a daily basis. Great win. Let's be excited about it. But Monday, put your feet back on the ground and let's go. What can go wrong? What could go wrong? <laughs> yeah. No. It's, uh, speaking of which, next week is – this week is Ridgeview mm -hmm. tomorrow. And that's not going to be easy either. We got to see Ridgeview on B Varsity Live. We're How is it tomorrow already? It just feels like we just – you guys just played. That's one of the great things about ago. football season is that you, Love it. You, you get the high school games Friday, the college games Saturday, the NFL games Sunday and Monday, and then all of a sudden high school is like three days away again. That's, that's the great thing about it. Uh, we will show Ridgeview and Liberty live on Bakersfield.com Friday night. Chris, let's put the schedule up of the games we're going to broadcast this weekend. And uh, I, I will be on the call there, Ridgeview at Liberty. 7.30 p.m. Is, is kickoff time. We'll probably come on the air a few minutes before that. Uh, and then our other games – East is at North. Now, that game originally scheduled for East, but the stadium renovations there on Perimeter Field are not done yet, so they've moved the game to North High. And then the third game with Ryan Holton, Lewis Amistoy will be Porterville at West. And, of course, Bakersfield plays Edison, which is – and Centennial plays Clovis West, two very big games up in Fresno. We, we keep the streams in Bakersfield. But uh, it's a big week. I mean, this this week – and, Coach, you know, you've seen it time and time again, those games up North, you got to root for, for the hometown schools because it shapes seating – you got to take care of your own business. I mean, it's September, but it's already real. Definitely. There's some big games. But, you know, anybody that goes up north, we're rooting for them. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's the way it always has been. And, you know, Bakersfield has to root for Bakersfield, no matter if they go down south or up north. But when we play in town, they're rivals. But right now, we're rooting for our guys. We want to see them compete and do well. And the schedule you guys play is, is, is pretty awesome, Stavros. Hey, what, what do you see from Ridgeview? I mean, where, where are the challenges this week? Uh, definitely in, with their running backs, and they have a big front line. I mean, I mean, you could go without saying Sheldon Coney is a good running back in, in Bakersfield, if not the state of California. But I feel like we have a good chance of what we've been doing in practice and what Coach has been saying, just consistency for us. Does your responsibility and your assignments change week to week depending on who you play, or, or are you pretty consistent in what you have to do? Um, I feel like I'm pretty consistent in what I have to do, and mainly just – Whatever the coaches tell me I have to do that week, basically. I mean, but do those it, instructions change? Um, a little bit, yeah, but not not too much. I mean, we don't stray too far from what I'm supposed to do. That's a good answer. It's a very good answer. Now, if we get coach, could you leave for a second? What? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it, it is a big game though. Ridgeview really put it on Frontier. I assume you've seen film mm -hmm. of that. Uh, what did you see from them that that maybe opened your eyes that you didn't know about them before? Uh, I think everybody knew Ridgeview was going to be very explosive. You know, and they showed that Friday night in their film. I'm a little bigger than I thought because we haven't seen any of their linemen in seven-on-seven seven stuff. So right. they have a big front. Their defense flies around. they got a lot of athletes on the defense side of the football, which, you know, a lot of people like to talk about offense a lot, but their defense flew around, and that was pretty impressive. That's what we saw in film. And you, you talk about explosive. I mean, Trevor, you, we saw it. They, they turned that game around like that. Oh, in, that fr it, Frontier's going in to take the lead right before halftime. Ridgeview stops them on downs, goes 90 yards in about a minute, and yep. then gets a pick six right before half. And it's and it's not just Sheldon Crony. Jamar Moya is back there. they got a great quarter. You know, the quarterbacks played very, very well. Lawrence White, yeah. Yeah, Lawrence White. It, it, 
I see a lot of a lot of matchups that they can really kind of exploit. But I think I think one of the first things that we talked about in early August with the both of you is that you know you feel that you guys may have, and I I personally feel you guys may have one of the best defenses in the central section in Southern California, maybe even the state. You guys, after going down and playing Mission Viejo, does that thought process still go through your heads? I I think our our philosophy has always been. Defense wins championships, and that's where we're going to put a lot of emphasis on. And um, we never really talk about let's be the best in the state. Let's we talk about being consistent on a daily basis, and we have to know our assignments. And we got to get eleven guys to the football. I know it's all cliche and coach talk, but that's what we talk about, yep. you know. And there's there's nothing really said. Hey, let's be the best today in the state. It's hey, let's be the best today in what we're trying to do. Stavros, you guys brought a lot back on defense, but one of the big newcomers is your defensive end who popped that ball out for you and Curtis Brown. Tell me how much, you know, how great he looked in his first game on varsity as a sophomore for you guys. Oh, he was he was awesome. I mean, I didn't I wasn't expecting that, but I mean, I know he's a big guy and a great player. I mean, big time player, but that was just really awesome for him to like really see him fill in his spot on his first varsity start. Brian? L- l- for the record, by the way, Stavros popped the ball out. With his helmet, you Cur- did. Good Curtis did the dirty work. He held it up, and then, yeah. yeah. Did you look over at Chris and say, "This is my ball, punk"? <laughs> uh, and I, I think, I think on the film, I think Chris kind of like, like kind of rolled over him, and I was still standing up, like I didn't We're fall watching down at all. Yeah, right that's right. Now. He just he did roll over just a yep. little bit. So, that that's really it, you know some of those things. It's, you got to be lucky and good sometimes. I mean, the ball's yeah. got to bounce your way, and it bounced right to you, and that's that's a very cool thing. Uh, we, we talked about Bakersfield and Centennial going up to Fresno to play big games. BHS plays Edison. Uh, Centennial plays Clovis West. This league this year is something mm-hmm. else. Now, we don't know a whole lot about Stockdale yet. They haven't played a game yet. Garces didn't have its quarterback. They lost their first game. Uh, and, and Frontier struggled a little bit with Ridgeview, especially in the second half. But you guys go down to Mission Viejo and win. Bakersfield beats a ranked team in Oaks Christian. Of course, we know how good Bakersfield can be from last year. Uh, and, and Centennial goes up to Porterville and puts it on a pretty good Porterville team. The Power League I know is good every year. Is the top of it better than ever, Brian? I, uh, I believe so. I think it's called the Power League for a reason, and we could probably put that in parentheses because this year is probably the best it's ever been. You know, I know it's a small window of how long it's actually been called the Power League, but top to bottom, man, it's tough. And that's kind of, I think, what everybody envisioned when they made this Power League that – this is what we want week in and week out. And this year, better than ever. You're going to get it week in and week out. Did it surprise you that Bakersfield won easily or that Centennial won easily? I mean, do you, do you check these results after – I know the Bakersfield game ended after yours. So Yeah, no, it doesn't at all. I, you know, they're, they're good football teams. They're well coached. They're hard-nosed. They play hard. I think it was a huge night for Kern County football all the way around. I think it was great. So it's, um, it's a pleasure to be a part of it. And to know that there's such good opponents in our town that it's fun to root for. I'm going to go back five years. Well, say six years because that's as long as I've been here. Is, is Kern County football better in those six years? It's, it seems like it is to me. Maybe I'm just paying more attention. But it, 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 you mentioned, hey, let's go down to the southern section and beat some of these teams. It didn't used to be like that. It used to be yeah. you go down there and, yeah, you like to compete. But very rarely do you come back with a win like that. Definitely. I think um, – I think we're starting to be able to venture out. There wasn't a lot of teams because we've tried for years to get some southern Hmm. section teams to play us. And uh, now we're starting to get some of that. And I think that kind of helps with BHS winning the state last year. Kind of put Bakersfield on the map. I mean, let's call it what it is. They kind of set the way, and now we're starting to get some of these teams to play us. How did Mission Viejo react to you guys? Did you get the sense early in the game on the field from the guys that they weren't taking you seriously, that, oh, it's a Bakersfield team? I mean, or, or, or do they know? Um, I felt like they come out, they came out strong. I mean, I don't think they underestimated us at all. I guess they know now if they didn't know before. <laughs> right? uh, well, we're going to take a break. We'll be back on Be Varsity Live. Brian Nixon and, and Stavros Katz and Tonus. Katz and Tonus. Cat- it's like Katz and Donuts. How about you Katz say his first name and I'll just fill in because I know how to pronounce it. All right. All right. Stavros. Stavros. Katz and Tonus. Okay. I'll get it. There it's so, there's something like my tongue gets tied <laughs> when I say it. Okay. We'll, we'll be right back with these two guys, uh, right back on Be Varsity Live. 